so Jude screened first. Uh, we knew that antibodies was the wild card, that, that there was a risk. We were well aware of that. And um, I guess uh, m my understanding of that risk uh, was, was that it was about a 5% chance. Uh, I think some of the early literature showed that, you know, 5% of the general population um, do have antibodies to um, this virus. It's, it's a similar virus, but it results in an immune response to the particular virus they use. Um, I always worried a little bit about the San Filippo kids and the fact that they put lots of things in their mouths. And would that mean that as a community, they were more susceptible to picking up these um, antibodies than the general population? I guess that was always in the back of my head, um, but I, I kind of couldn't really control it. And so um, I guess I put it out of my mind. And I hadn't actually heard of any child. I heard of some children in the natural history study who screen positive, um, but I hadn't heard anecdotally of any children in the main trial uh, who had. Um, and remember, we, you know, as a community are not supposed to talk. So there could have been some other ones that, that we just didn't kind of hear about. Um, what we know now is that the incidence of these antibodies is, is something more like 30%. And there's literature out there that shows that. So it is a significant problem. And as a field, the gene therapy um, you know, field needs to figure out a solution for this. Um, so we screened and I was so hopeful he just did beautifully and it was, it was stressful. I mean, screening for these trials is really stressful and there's so much writing on it. Um, but, you know, he did beautifully and um, he, he pretty much passed every, every other hurdle. Um, and unfortunately he, he fell at the very last one, which was the antibodies he screened positive. And it was like diagnosis day all over again. You know, I'd held three or four years of hope that, or three years of hope that this would, you know, be the thing. I'd invested so much personally uh, and professionally into getting this trial up. You know, it wasn't just for my kids, but of course, if they were eligible, I, I wanted them to have the opportunity to participate. And so it was really crushing to, to know that, you know this one thing and and we had no idea where where he picked it up or when he picked it up you know was it in the years while we were waiting for the trial to come was it you know six weeks ago who, who knew when he picked this up and it's probably a good thing i don't know um but i also uh we all assumed that isla would have it too these children are never apart. I mean, and they are so close. They're never apart. She's the older one. So if he'd been exposed, it had happened in her lifetime. Um, you know, I couldn't imagine how he could have, you know, contracted a virus and not passed it on to her. So I guess the assumption was it was over for both kids. And um, it was really a bit of a miracle when we screened and that was the first thing we did um, in the screening process for Isla, um, but got the, you know, the results back. Uh, the doctor called me and I remember him just saying, I don't, I, I can't believe it, but she's negative. Um, so that was an amazing, an amazing day. I um, still don't understand how, but um, I'm not going to question that. Yeah. <laughs> what I understood speaking with the clinicians was the risk of that, of him actually shedding the virus were very low. And the fact that he'd contracted and it could have been years before and that she hadn't, um, it was unlikely that he would now be able to pass the virus from, from him to her. Um, but what I was more concerned about was that she would pick that virus up in the community um, mm -hmm. in the time between you know, her being screened for the antibody and, and being able to progress through the screening for the clinical trial. So we actually um, pulled her out of school and pretty much isolated her for, for the period of time we were waiting to screen. And we didn't actually know if we were going to be invited to screen. That was the other thing because she was the older of the siblings. Um, we, we weren't even sure if, if she would be, she was eligible on paper, uh, but whether the, the clinicians, you know, would screen her or if they would look at other um, 
you know, potentially more suitable candidates. So we pulled her out of school. Um, you know, I had, I kept working and had a private nanny looking after her. And we had all these rules. I remember the rules that we had stuck up on the wall. Anybody that came to the house had to wash their hands, um, sanitize their hands. If you came to the house and you had a sniffle, you were out. Um, she wasn't allowed to swim. She wasn't allowed to, you know, go anywhere. And, and if we did take her out and when we had to take her out to Adelaide, um, you know, I would board the plane and wipe everything down with, with, you know, antibacterial wipes. And, you know, this people must have thought we were absolutely crazy. Um, but I just thought, gosh, we're so close. I'm not risking it now. 